A man who needs no introduction. <laughs> <laughs> Since the beginning, what it would be like to be at the beginning of a Toastmasters club, the birth of a Toastmasters club. Well, I attended a birth of a Toastmasters club yesterday. At UIC, where I work, I hosted a demonstration meeting for the establishment of a Toastmasters club. And after that demonstration meeting, 24 students signed up as chartered members, and we're going to have a UIC Toastmasters Club. Thank you. But something happened at that demonstration meeting which taught me a lesson about something else that had happened to me many, many years ago, a lesson that you might find useful when you hear about it in a few minutes. Part of this demonstration meeting was to have an experienced Toastmaster give a presentation to novice Toastmasters to see what an experienced Toastmaster can do with words. And the person who was giving that presentation, some of you may know, her name is Moni Petzal. Now Moni is a small, I mean small, Asian from Thailand, seemingly very shy until she begins to speak. <laughs> and then she's like a little tiger <laughs> in her face and really getting it. And you go, wow, that is something. I never saw someone like that speak. But before she spoke to the students to show good speech to them, she had handed me a paper with a long written introduction to read to the students. And in the chaos of the meeting, this was our first meeting, I was involved with finding chairs and timing cards and getting everybody set up. I forgot completely about that introduction. And I welcomed Moni. I said, and here's Moni, an experienced Toastmaster, distinguished Toastmaster. Moni came up and said, Ken, what about my introduction? No introduction? I said, sorry, Moni. And I took the introduction, and I read exactly what she had written. And it was a good thing I had done so, because it helped the students understand the context of her speech. It made her feel good, because she had the introduction she needed to build upon. And it made me feel good, because I could see I had provided the service as Toastmaster, which I was, that was necessary for her to give it a good speech. But her reminding me to read the introduction also reminds me of something that had happened many years ago at my son's bar mitzvah. Now, many of you are familiar with the fact that a bar mitzvah is given when a, a, a young man reaches 13. And at that time, I had asked my father, so my son's grandfather, to make a small presentation sometime during the bar for day in celebration of the event. Now that bar mitzvah, like that Toastmasters meeting yesterday, was chaotic. Even though bar mitzvahs are regular events, they're not scripted, or at least it wasn't scripted that day. So I wasn't sure exactly what was happening. And there was a service, and then we'd have some kind of ritual, and next thing I know, we'd be running here and running there. And at the end of the day, I realized my father hadn't said the words I had asked him to say, the few words. I hadn't given him the opportunity. I hadn't asked him to make his presentation. I said, Dad, I forgot to ask you to say what you had to say. I know. I said, well, why didn't you remind me? Just, I, you could see I was going out of my mind with these things. So busy. He didn't say anything. And ever since that day, I regretted that lost opportunity for my son 
to hear what my father had to say. The lost opportunity of my father not having the chance to say what he wanted to say about his grandson, and me having a lost opportunity of not linking all the generations together. And it was because my father didn't remind me that he had something to say. Why, I don't know. But he didn't speak up and remind me. Moni spoke up and said, what about my introduction? And she gave her, gave her speech after the introduction, and everything worked well. My father, for whatever reasons, didn't remind me. And he deprived his grandson, himself, and me of a really deep pleasure. So the lesson is if you ever find yourself in a situation where you've been invited to speak, and you don't know why they haven't asked you to do your speech or make your presentation or do whatever it is you're supposed to do, you owe it to the audience who's there to hear what you have to say. You owe it to the person who invited you. And you owe it to yourself to remind the host that you have something to say. So don't be afraid, just say it.